Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the Arrhenius equation. We're going to talk about what the Arrhenius equation actually is, how to use it, and why it's important when studying rates of reaction. Using the Arrhenius equation to find activation energy with Arrhenius plots has been covered in a separate video, and I recommend watching this one first before that one. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about the Arrhenius equation, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Rates of reaction describe how quickly reactions are occurring. They can be measured in terms of the speed at which reactant concentration decreases or the speed at which product concentration increases, given the units mole per decimeter cubed per second. In order for a reaction between two substances to occur, particles of each must collide together with the correct orientation. <laughs> By correct orientation, we just mean they have to hit each other at the right angle. A bit like your hands have to collide in the right way to fit together. If a collision between particles happens with enough energy, the activation energy, and leads to the formation of new products, the collision is described as successful. The greater the frequency of these successful collisions occurring during a reaction, the faster its rate. Activation energy refers to the minimum amount of energy that particles must collide with in order for a reaction to occur. Rate equations show how changing the concentrations of reactants affects the rate of a reaction and allows us to calculate the rate of a reaction based on the concentrations of reactants at a specific temperature. Rate equations contain three parts. Rate, units of mole per decimeter cubed per second. Concentrations of reactants raised to their orders, units of mole per decimeter cubed, and a rate constant K. Given a general arrangement of rate equals rate constant K multiplied by concentrations of the reactants raised to the power of the order of the reaction with respect to their concentration. Recap done? Let's go! Only particles that have the required activation energy and collide with the correct orientation will be able to react together meaning the rate of a reaction is based on the concentrations of reactants present and the proportion of those concentrations that have the required activation energy and will collide with the correct orientation at any one moment. In a rate equation, this proportion of particles is represented using a rate constant k, and at a specific temperature it will always be the same for a particular reaction. For example, let's imagine a reaction A plus B forms C plus D and has a rate equation of rate equals rate constant K multiplied by concentration of A. We know the rate of a reaction is determined by the concentration of reactants and this is why concentration of A is in the rate equation. Makes sense. However, we also know that the rate of a reaction is based on the temperature, activation energy barrier, and the proportion of particles colliding with the correct orientation each second. If the rate equation tells us that the rate of the reaction equals rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of A, then all these other things that affect the rate of the reaction temperature, activation energy, and frequency of collisions of correct orientations must be accounted for by whatever value K is. K is basically telling us then the proportion of the concentration of A that is able to successfully collide each second. You may be thinking at this point, how do we break down all of these other factors to a single value K? Well, luckily for us, some very clever scientists have beaten us to this, and one in particular called Arrhenius produced an equation that enables us to calculate this value k. We call this equation, rather unsurprisingly, the Arrhenius equation. The Arrhenius equation can look intimidating to students at first, and it's really important you understand the chemistry behind it before worrying too much about the maths side of things. <laughs> 
The equation in its most common form is rate constant k equals a multiplied by e to the power minus ea over rt. <laughs> Sounds awful. Let's break the equation down. We've just looked at the fact that the rate constant k is based on the temperature, activation energy and the proportion of frequency of collisions occurring with the correct orientation. Meaning the Arrhenius equation must include these things in it. And it does. Ea is activation energy, kilojoules per mole. T is temperature, in Kelvin. R is the gas constant, a fixed value of 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. A is something called the Arrhenius constant, or pre-exponential factor, and can have different units for different reactions. And E is something called Euler's number. It's literally just a number. However, as it has an infinite number of decimal places, we write it as E. But a bit more on that later in the video. Remember that the whole point of the rate constant k is essentially to tell us the proportion of reacting particles that can collide successfully each second. And this proportion is based on the number of collisions that are occurring each second with the correct orientation and the number of these collisions that have the required activation energy. We can see this within the Arrhenius equation. There are actually two main sections to it a and e to the power minus ea over rt. The a part, the Arrhenius constant, is a value that describes the proportion of collisions between reactant particles that are happening each second with the correct orientation. If all these collisions happened with the required activation energy, then the rate of reaction would effectively be this value multiplied by the concentration of reactants. However, we know that only a small proportion of collisions have the required activation energy. Even if two particles collide with the correct orientation, they still won't be able to react unless they have the required activation energy. And this is where the second part of the Arrhenius equation comes in. The second part, e to the power minus ea over rt, tells us the fraction of reactant particles that have at least the required activation energy. Therefore, if we times the proportion of collisions happening with the correct orientation per second by the proportion of particles in a system that have the required activation energy, we get the proportion of successful collisions that can occur per second. Hopefully you're with me at this point. At this level, the value of A, the Arrhenius constant, is pretty much always the same for a given reaction, and R, the gas constant, is just that, a constant, also always the same. Meaning it is only changes in activation energy, by using a catalyst, or changes in temperature that will change the value of K, the rate constant, for any given reaction. As long as these are kept the same, however, the value for k will also always be the same. And this is why in rate equations, we don't worry about writing out this full Arrhenius expression. We simply substitute k into the rate equation. The total number of collisions occurring per second is based on the concentration of reactants present. And the proportion of these collisions that can lead to a reaction are described by the rate constant k. This is why, to find the rate of a reaction, the rate constant k has to be multiplied by the concentration of reactants, as shown in a rate equation for a reaction. If temperature is increased, then the proportion of particles with the required activation energy will increase, making the e to the power minus ea over rt part of the Arrhenius expression larger meaning a greater proportion of particles can collide with the required activation energy. For example, if the activation energy for a reaction is 200 kilojoules per mole and the reaction happens at a temperature of 298 Kelvin, then the proportion of particles with the required activation energy is e to the power minus 200 divided by 298 times the gas constant R, 8.31 over a thousand to get it into kilojoules to match the units of activation energy. This gives a value of 8.4 times 10 to the minus 36, a tiny number. 
If the temperature is increased, let's say to 370 Kelvin, then now the proportion of particles with the required activation energy is e to the power minus 200 divided by 370 times the gas constant R, 8.31 over 1000 again. 5.6 times 10 to the minus 29. Still really small, but 10 million times larger than for a temperature of 298 Kelvin. If the activation energy of a system is decreased by using a catalyst, then again the e to the power minus Ea over Rt part of the expression gets larger, showing us that a greater proportion of particles have the required activation energy than before, which would lead to a higher frequency of successful collisions. For example, let's say we take that reaction happening at 298 Kelvin with an activation energy of 200 kilojoules per mole and we use a catalyst that lowers the activation energy to 100 kilojoules per mole. With an activation energy of 200 kilojoules per mole, we said the proportion of particles that have the required activation energy is 8.4 times 10 to the minus 36. At an activation energy of 100 kilojoules per mole, however, the proportion of particles that have the required activation energy is now e to the power minus 100 divided by 298 times 8.31 over 1000. 2.9 times 10 to the minus 18. A massive increase. That's a quintillion times more particles to have the required activation energy when it's lowered from 200 kilojoules per mole to 100 kilojoules per mole. You can see just how important catalysts are. You may also have spotted here from these two examples that small changes in temperature and activation energy can lead to huge changes in the proportion of molecules that have the required activation energy. Two scientists, Maxwell and Boltzmann, also noticed this when they too were studying the relationship between the proportion of particles with required activation energy and temperature. They found that as temperature increased or decreased, or as activation energy increased or decreased, the proportion of particles with required activation energy changed logarithmically. This just means that if the activation energy or temperature changes, the proportion of particles that have the required activation energy changes by a much bigger factor. This kind of relationship is actually very common in nature and when plotted on a graph gives a curve that goes upwards rapidly. The shape of this curve shows how things grow in relation to their own size and with a bit of maths work is based on a value called E, Euler's number, as any y value on the curve equals this E number to the power x. For rates of reaction and the relationship between the proportion of particles with the required activation energy and the activation energy or temperature of a reaction, Maxwell and Boltzmann found that the shape of the graph can be represented using the function e to the power minus Ea over Rt. <laughs> For this level of study, don't worry. You really don't need to worry too much about where E comes from or how to use it. Just try to remember it is a value, a number. It is this E part of the Arrhenius equation that makes the equation rather tricky to work with, however. To make things easier, we can actually get rid of the E by taking what are called natural logarithms, ln or ln. Your calculator can actually do this for you if it has an ln button. In a nutshell, when you multiply e to the power x by ln, it equals x, meaning if we multiply e to the power minus ea over rt by ln, we end up with minus ea over rt. Great, much easier. To use the Arrhenius equation, however, we can't just multiply this part of it by ln, we have to multiply the whole equation by it giving us ln k equals ln a plus minus ea over rt, which is just ln k equals ln a minus ea over rt. If you're a bit confused as to how we did that last step, don't worry too much. Just remember that the Arrhenius equation can be represented in two forms. 
k equals a multiplied by e to the power minus ea over rt and lung k equals lung a minus ea over rt. Both forms can be useful depending on what you are trying to calculate, as shown in a separate video about Arrhenius plots. So, to summarise, the rate of a reaction is based on the number of particles that are colliding with the required activation energy and correct orientation each second. This is determined by the concentration of the reactants present, the temperature, the activation energy barrier of the reaction, and the proportion of collisions occurring between particles that have the correct orientation each second. The number of particles present is determined by the concentration of reactants, and the proportion of those that are colliding with the correct orientation and have the required activation energy can be calculated using the expression A times E to the power minus Ea over RT where A is the Arrhenius constant and describes the frequency and proportion of collisions occurring between particles that have the correct orientation. Ea is activation energy, R is the gas constant that links the energy of gas particles with temperature, and T is temperature. This means the rate of a reaction can be considered as the total number of particles present based on concentration, multiplied by the proportion of those particles that are colliding with the required activation energy and correct orientation each second. At a given temperature, the proportion of particles that will collide with the required activation energy and correct orientation will always be the same, a constant, meaning we show it in rate equations as k, the rate constant. This rate constant can be calculated using A times E to the power minus Ea over RT, and this form of the expression is called the Arrhenius equation. To remove the E component, we can multiply the Arrhenius equation by LUN, natural log, and get the form LUN K equals LUN A minus Ea over RT. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.